what happened, somebody got us, some, some, some Marine guy got us at the hospital there and took us down to the beach. And he, we're going to protect the beach that night. They figured a chapter. They figured a chapter going to come in that night. And he said, "I said, we ain't got. He said, you'll get your you'll get your rifles when you get down here." And me and my buddy had about four or five of us. And he he put us. He said, "This is your section right here on this beach here, right on the white sand we're sitting there." And nobody came around and gave us guns. So what do we do with the Japs? Come? He said, "We'll hit them over the head with a goddamn stick or something," you know. And we sat there all that night. We, none of us slept. We were waiting any minute for the jet. I said, Jim, Jeff, start coming. I would have started running like hell the other way, you know, all we could do. But we just sat there and, and nothing happened that night. But we all, they all expected the Japs to land and invade us. But that's how, how, how messed up they were. They had us, they had five or six, they were sitting there without any, any kind of weapon at all. Not even a pocket knife. <laughs> the Japanese Navy, knew where all our ships were, the exact location of all our battleships and everything. They knew exactly where they were moored, and they had to get that information from somebody that was in Pearl Harbor, you know. Of course, back in those days, a Japanese could come in there and walk around. You didn't have to show any citizenship. You, you could get a, get a pass to go to the Navy Yard and walk around and look at things, you know. So they probably got a lot of plenty of all the information where the location of the ships were. Because, in other words, like the Oklahoma, they, they had a certain spot. They always tied, even if they went out to sea, they come back to the same spot, and it was their spot, you know, along the dock there. And each each battleship had its own particular mooring place where they always went back to whenever they were gone. You know, they're always at that same spot. And on Sunday morning, they were all in their protect their protect specific stocks, spots. And then talking about martial law, um, were you confined, you were confined to your ship then? Well, yes, uh, either at a receiving station, confined to the receiving station okay. at, at Pearl Harbor or, and, until the ship came in. Then when the ship came in, we were confined to the ship. Nobody could go ashore. And were there a lot of people that were trying to leave Hawaii at that point in time to get back to, to the United States? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of the, the wives and children, there were a lot of wives and children there. Matter of fact, it was mandatory that they, they leave. Some of them didn't want to leave, but they had to leave. The Navy required all, all, the, all the families to leave, the women and children of the Navy, Navy, Navy personnel. They had, a, they had a big transport, the transports came in, they put them on a transport and sent them back to the States. And I know this one friend of mine had, had, had his wife there, and didn't have any children, and she worked at the Navy Yard, and she wanted to keep her job there. And because she was married to a sailor, she had to go back to the States. She couldn't stay there. And they had an apartment in, in, uh, in the Navy Yard, in a Navy housing deal. They had a house there, a, a Navy house, you know. They rented from the Navy there. And uh, she had to go back to the States. <laughs> 